Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Now today's video is another uh, instruction video, if you will, uh, more than a review of a product video. And it's on updating the firmware of the Creality CR6 uh, 3D printer to the community firmware that's available, developed by, uh, I think the main guy developing it is a guy called Sebastian Demarn. I'm sorry, Sebastian, if I've got your, uh, your surname wrong, but a big thanks to him for developing it. I've put bit, most of the info I've got off this was from a recent live stream by Tripods Garage, another great site for loads of 3D printing info. I'll put links to all these below and I'll number them throughout this video so you've got reference to which link it is. The firmware itself is on GitHub. I'll put a link to that and I'm going to go through a full instruction on on how to format your sd card and uh, how to do the actual two updates the motherboard and the screen bit by bit i'm going to be doing the actual bit i haven't done it yet i'm going to be doing that in sort of like real time very soon so any mistakes i make i'll leave on the video and uh, we'll go through all the uh, rectification of them if, if i do make mistakes and i'm hoping the card works again i'll go into that shortly first of all so I got the machine about three weeks ago, so I've only had it three weeks. Now, I did a lot of research beforehand. I'm well aware of the initial issues with motherboards burning out, uh, the faulty switch sparking. I know about the clips at the front shorting out the heater underneath and the 24 volt problem with the USB. I've, I've checked mine, even though mine has got the earlier, uh, was it 452 board, all connections are fine. It's worked fantastic for three weeks. It's never missed a beat. I've done all the fan updates on it. If you click this link up here, I've done another video on updating all the fans to silent Noctua fans. And it now, you just cannot hear it, it's fantastic. But I have decided to do this firmware update because if you're watching this video, you'll probably be aware of it anyway. It's got loads more features. The interface is much nicer. You can control the flow rate and then stuff from the screen. There's loads and loads of features. I won't go into all the features now. You, like I say, you'll be aware of them or that you can go into them by looking at some of the links I give. But I mean, I've just finished this Hellboy. That was a 17 hour print quite a bit of sort of artifacts and stringing on this mainly i think because it's really highly detailed and the, f the filament wasn't uh, too good but that printed faultlessly there was no cleaning up required on that loads of uh, bits in that this uh, pikachu i've done for my daughter it's as smooth as silk that's great a little uh, yoda for my wife I ran out of the white, this was the white filament that came with the machine, ran out of that and it stopped at the run out sensor, fed some uh, silver stuff in it, just carried on, great, so chills that works, and my favourite so far was this dice roller, that was 27 hours and just no cleaning up what took whatsoever to do, and that's as smooth as silk. So it is a great printer, despite some of its uh, initial te teething problems. Whether my motherboard will be long-lived or not, I don't know. Eventually, I'll probably upgrade to the Victory Tech one, because uh, they're not much money. So I'll play it by ear, but basically, like I said, this video is on how to update the firmware. So the main thing from looking at the YouTube video recently on Tripod's Garage is getting the right SD card. It's got to be below 16 gigabytes, 16 or less, preferably eight or less. If you try formatting one above that, it won't format properly. I'll just show you that now. I've just bought this, saw it on Hot UK Deals. So I got it, it's a Kyoxia. So it's a proper bait, which basically to Toshiba. Uh, Xeria, 16 gig SD card. I've got 128 gig ones and that I'm going to show you if what happens if you try to format that we need to format at FAT32 and I'll show you what happens if you try it with a too big a card and then we'll do it with this card. So let's have a, a quick look at that now. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got the high capacity extra capacity card in the SanDisk 128 gig card. 
And as you can see, it's a SDXC, Secure Digital Extra Capacity. And just to show you that this card is not suitable, if we right click and format, you can see here the capacity too big for our purposes. And we've got XFAT available or NTFS, but we have no FAT32 available. So that shows you that this card is unsuitable. So if we now take that out, and I'm now putting in that Xeria card I just showed you, 16 gigabyte one. And as you can see, that's an SDHC, Secure Digital High Capacity, only 16 gig in size. If we right click on that and select Format, there we are. You see, File System FAT32 is available. You've got NTFS FAT32 or XFAT, and it's the FAT32 format we want, and the allocation size. 4096. So if you select that and format it as FAT32, 4096 allocation. Okay, so that's now the card ready for putting our uh, firmware on. So we've now formatted our uh, SD card. And I'll now show you where to download the firmware from. And uh, I'll sort of talk you through this. I will put the link to this site that I'm going on now as the first link, the link numbered number one in the description below. And throughout this video, I'll tell you the numbers of each link and then I go through it again at the end. So if you're following this, click on the link entitled number one in the description below. So let's go and download the firmware now. Okay, so this is where we download the firmware from. And uh, like I've just said, I'll put this in the link below entitled link number one. So if you're following along with this, if you open that link and uh, this is the page it will lead you to. And there is absolutely loads of uh, great info on this page. Pictures of the new user interface and in detail it goes into great detail on um, as you can see in everything that the new firmware does and the improvements and changes over the existing stuff you can uh, set it up to change filaments in your slicing software loads and loads of good stuff but to get to the firmware we need is right at the very bottom under here assets so these are the various types of firmware and you need to know which motherboard you have got now i have got the 452 version here you can see there this top one is for the the big tree tech one with their own screen this one is for the big tree tech motherboard if you're using the stock Creality screen and, and so on so on the 452 board the 453 board but this is the one I want so if you've got this board click on that so click on the one relative to your motherboard so if we click on this one here I will now save that file There we have so I'm going to open that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a folder on the desktop and I'll put um, something like call it what you want main download zip so if we put the zip file in there, 
Okay, so I'm going to unzip it within here. Now in here, you've got this one here, the firmware bin. That is the firmware for file for the motherboard. And the one for the screen is zipped here. So I'm going to create another folder here and call it screen firmware. Like I said, just do this anyway. You want create folders, call them what you want. And I will unzip it to there. So if we select the touch screen one and tell it to unzip to there. Okay, so that should now be in there. So here are some pictures in here. There's a readme text there and it goes through great instructions here. Here's just what I've been uh, saying. The allocation size and FAT32 and tells you all about the size of cards. And there's loads of uh, great info in there. And it's this thing here, the DWIN set, that entire folder that we drag onto the SD card for the screen. And it's this firmware bin that we drag onto the SD card for the, uh, the motherboard firmware. Now I believe that you can put both these files, the screen uh, firmware and the main motherboard firmware, Board firmware on the SD card but uh, I'm just going to put one on at a time so first of all we'll um, drag the firmware onto it so straight onto the SD card double check it's on there yeah there it is so when people say put something on the root of the card what that means is just put it straight onto the card don't put it within any folders in that card you just put it dump it straight onto the card otherwise it won't read it at all so uh, at this stage all we've got is that the firmware on the SD card will now check that so let's go over to the printer now and install this firmware Okay, so we've got the motherboard firmware on the card. Oh, let's go and plug it into the machine and uh, see if it works. Okay, so we're about to update the firmware now. I have got the SD card here with the, the bin file on. We're just going to do the motherboard first. So I shall put it in the slot the right way around. So I'll just turn the light off and zoom in on the screen so we can see it a bit better. And like I said, this is in real time. Fingers crossed this works. Here we go, switch on. Well, it's not moving across. So I've no idea whether it's worked or not. Let's see if... Um Info, yeah, as you see there, there's no firmware version on it now, so I'm hoping that that has worked. So we will turn it off and we will 
do the screen firmware. So as you saw, there is no actual visual indication that the firmware is installing if you're using the st if you've got like me a stock Creality motherboard. Um, if you've got the BTT board, you get a flashing blue light. The hot end blue LED flashes to indicate it, which is a much much better way of doing it. But if you go into that info screen and you can see it showing no firmware, you know it's installed. So it's now time to install the screen firmware. Now, as I showed before, there's two separate files and um, Sebastian said in the video, the um, YouTube Tripods Garage uh, live broadcast, that you could have both uh, files on the SD card. But what I've done is I've deleted the firmware one off it now. And I've just dragged that whole file shown that we downloaded uh, first onto it. So I'll show you first of all, putting that file and which file we have to put on onto the SD card. Let's do that now. Okay, so the uh, firmware install of the motherboard seemed to go okay. We'll uh, soon see now with the uh, as we finish it off with the update of the screen firmware. So I've deleted that from the uh, the SD card and like I say if we go over now to here the screen firmware and it's this D winset the whole folder don't you know that that folder contains loads of stuff don't go into it just drag the whole folder onto the root again of the SD card. So that's all that's on that SD card now. And again, we'll check that. Take that out and let's go and see if the, uh, the screen update works. So to do the screen firmware, we've got to actually remove the screen. So first of all, we'll take out these two screws here where we mounted it originally when we received the machine now we flip it open open and take out the four screws so I'll just do that now and we'll be right back so once we've uh, removed these two screws just pull the plug out there and we need to take these four screws out here so we'll do that now so it's uh, it's quite awkward to get in because it's right up against this lip here but that's the way the card goes in with the label facing upmost and if you push it you can feel the spring and a click so I'm now going to connect it up when you connect it up again another important thing obviously is don't have any of the metal in contact and the circuit board or whatever so make sure it's well away and put on something non-conductive. So uh, I'm just going to connect that now, turn the machine on, and fingers crossed uh, it all works. Okay, as you can see, I've got it uh, reconnected up now with the wire underneath. The SD card is in with that folder on, and uh, got it resting against a cloth there. So I'll... Uh, Zoom in, turn the lights out, and we'll uh, turn it on. And again, fingers crossed. Right, here goes. Hopefully, we should see something happening. So, I've got SD card process, and the text at the top is red. We've got a 0103 0. 03000 just let it do its stuff I believe if it keeps showing no 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 then 
it's a faulty SD card or a badly formatted SD card, but this is showing 001, 003, 003, 00, 001, 005, 00, 00, 00, and it's got SD card process end, exclamation mark, so um, that's good. Uh, it'd be probably be better if it said uh, SD card process complete success smiley face instead of end exclamation mark but uh, I believe that is now done so what we do now is turn off the machine take the SD card out and put it all back together I'll, I'll leave it as it is now against the the cloth um, once I've taken the SD card out before I pour it all back together just to uh, double check that it works. So we now turn the machine off at the switch. And uh, I'll take that card out and be back shortly. So I've now taken the SD card out of the screen, reconnected the screen with its little white plug. Uh, there's no SD card in the main machine and I'm about to turn on. Like I said, I've just got the screen dangling out again on the rag. I just want to see if it it boots up okay and shows you the, the new user interface and then I'll, I'll screw it all back together. So again, fingers crossed. Let's switch on. Well, that definitely looks different. Creality Community Edition. Yeah, great. Oh, and it's uh, it's black, black and white. Looks even better than the blue and white. That's really strange because you're seeing it. I mean, looking through the camera, it looks blue, but looking at it with a naked eye, it's black. That's weird. But uh, anyway, yeah, you can see the new user interface. And another thing I forgot to mention, they've taken such good care, the guys who've, de who've developed this. I forget that Sebastian did mention the guy who'd created this design, begins with a G. I will give him credit and I'll mention him later on in this video and uh, stick his name in, in the description at the bottom to give him credit because it does look fantastic. But they've taken such care that if you'd noticed before, the whole thing was shifted a midges to the right. If you haven't noticed, just have a look at yours before you update it and you'll see that the whole screen is moved over. What they've done, they've moved it four pixels to the left to get it absolutely centre and if you look down the side of each of these squares is bang on centre now. I'm going to have a mess about with the white balance on this camera and try and give it, show you a shot of what it actually looks like to the naked eye. Because um, like I say, I'm looking at it now with my naked eye and it uh, it looks black, but on this uh, camera it looks blue. Now at this stage I filmed the bed levelling and the battery ran out right at the very end, but I assumed it had caught most of it, but um, it corrupted the whole filming of it. So I've not found that out until I'm just putting this editing this video together. So the bed levelling part, and I've disassembled all the camera and the tripod now. What happened when I was doing the bed level? When I first started it, collected home bed level, the gantry, the, the uh, z-axis, was at the top because I'd just printed this quite tall model of Hellboy. And it remained at the top. And what seemed to happen was, when I pressed the uh, the bed level in, it started lowering down slowly, but then it stopped, and it just froze there. Turned the machine off. I did it again, and it did the same thing. So I assume that in that initial as it's coming down, it's looking for the uh, opto sensor at the bottom left hand side near the bed, and it wasn't finding it, so it so it's stopping. So what I did was. I turned, I turned the machine off, of course, and then just turned the screws, the Z-axis uh, screws, to lower the gantry down, and I got it just about two or three inches up from the bed. Um, so 
that's a point to remember if you're doing the bed leveling with the gantry already at a high starting height it might not do it so that's what i'm assuming maybe sebastian can confirm uh, if he ever sees this video in the notes that that's that's the case so uh, you might best just bef before you do the foot the initial bed leveling lower the um, the z-axis down till it's just about that far off the off the bed and then should be okay after that it did it okay it homed and, and everything and another thing is on this new updated firmware what sebastian's made it do is as it's coming down again i filmed all this but like i say it, it corrupted as it heats the the bed and the nozzle so that any um old filament in there is melted out of the way and it doesn't interfere with the, the strain gauge measuring and it heats the bed and it heats the nozzle but just as it's taking the measurement on the strain gauge it turns the heaters off the reason being that all the circuitry for the strain gauge and the hot end heater are up there next to each other and you can be in a pwm uh, signal you can get interference between the two so what sebastian has done in the firmware is just just as it's doing the bed leveling it turns the heating off uh, for a bit just to do the measurement um, you see that happen on the display it goes to zero and then when it's moving to the next position the heater seems to be on again it's up to temperature maintaining that heat and then as it comes down it just uh, turns it off and i measured the whole time it is slower than the stock one but that's because it's uh, been more accurate and it is totally stored in there after it's not forgotten with each each boot up so you only have to do it the once unless you've totally moved the printer around or whatever that all seemed to work great and it took between six and a half and seven minutes uh, on my stopwatch to get up to the uh, setting up your Z offset. So we'll recommence the uh, the video I filmed now um, at the end of the leveling process and we're just about to set the Z offset now. Right, it's typical me, my battery went in my camera right as it was approaching the end, but it's just got there at the end now in uh, s just under seven minutes. It was about six minutes, 50 seconds doing that. So. We've reached the end now and uh, of the levelling. So as before, what you'd do is I'll show you on here. You would select home now. And oops. It will move up to the home position. And you would set your Z offset as before. I'll just show you doing that. So, I'll, uh, it's a bit hard to show you both bits, but when you're doing the Z offset, it goes up now, up and down, in 0.01 units. Now, before I think it was 0.25 units, so you've a lot more accuracy now. So. What you'd do, you'd go up, and again, I think if you press this, don't press it too quick, or the processor can't keep up. So, just sort of press this up just to get yourself a bit of clearance underneath for your paper. I'll zoom out now, and then press the down button. So that's at 0.26. 
point two five point two four so like I say it's going down in hundreds now point two three point two two point two one and that's that's exactly what it was before point two zero on the old firmware it's point two zero as well so that's just as you see dragging on the paper so that is it all done it took about sort of seven minutes between six and a half and seven minutes to do all its bed leveling right here's to using it still can't get over the way it looks blue like i said that looks black that screen to the naked eye is all this bit here is black where it's black but this bit here where it says run automatic bed leveling it still looks black or a very 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 dark blue to the naked eye with like a grey area there it certainly looks a lot bluer on the camera than it, it does to my old 61 year old eyes so we're nearly at the end of the video now i'm sorry it's been so long but i did want to make it as detailed and intensive as possible um if you want to skip any of the waffling bits there's the edit line on the bottom here the red red line just skip to the bit you want to see but just before we do the final conclusion i want to show you these some side by side shots of it comparing the old uh, screen to the new one and just explain a couple of little differences on uh, one or two of the screens so uh, let's have a quick look at them now so you can see here the home screen the one on the right uh, much much nicer the there's the colored print at the top reality the bit where it says cr6 community is yellow it's a nice bright yellow and like i say it is a, a black color more than the blue you see there but and the icons look a lot better as well onto the file browser this is much much better the old one you can only access five pages so any more items than that and uh, you, you couldn't get them this one you can go up and down indefinitely and i believe you can see the contents within folders as well so again much much better and better laid out and on the prepare screen you can see the uh, again much uh, clearer and uh, filament extruder has replaced the words feed return which is a bit more intuitive and instead of preheat abs we've got preheat uh, pet g or ptg there on the move screen again pretty uh, similar but we've got colored items representing home and the word home and at the top the steps are going up incrementally instead of uh, down incrementally in the list and on the uh, filament extruder it replaces the words feed return um, retract and extrude are a bit more intuitive than the feed and return and the number in the middle um, it's got the word length above it so again just a, a bit more intuitive and a bit uh, obvious what it's referring to uh, the info screen the you've got the firmware is the community firmware there the website for the github uh, web and uh, we've got the build platform size and the height so we've got the build area displayed at the top now the control uh, menu it's a couple of extra features uh, again as well as being better laid out the ones that look the sort of turquoise color they're a green color with a white text and the one next to the uh, led um, there is uh, sound so you can turn a bleep the bleep when you press the screen on or off and the standby button is an addition uh, when the uh, machines uh, just left doing I idle uh, after about 30 seconds you can set the screen to uh, go down to standby to a certain brightness which is selectable there in a percentage uh, which is quite quite a handy uh, feature and uh, you got your info screen and your restore factory settings there at the bottom and finally the uh, leveling screen again it's uh, just looks better it's a bit more intuitive it shows you the path it takes when it's leveling 
and the bed and the nozzle are, are heated and as explained before just before when it's doing its uh, leveling to stop interference in the uh, electrical interference of the strain gauge it just turns the heater off for an instant and that's displayed after the slash there on on the bottom display okay so there you have it everything installation of the software the firmware went fantastically smoothly all worked first try um so the only sort of glitch i had was um as i mentioned in the video when i started the leveling process so if if you're the same start off with your gantry about you know three or four inches off your bed and hopefully it should be okay um still can't work out why my eyes are seeing it the screen as black it sees it as black and a very 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 dark blue um sort of more gray and through the camera it's blue and i tried every white balance whatsoever in the camera but yeah it, the interface looks really great so again my thanks to i believe it's got grow books for developing that user interface it looks absolutely brilliant and sebastian and anybody else who's worked on the firmware it's very very much appreciated and to a tripod sorry don't know your real name tripod uh for that live stream youtube video uh, and his original video explaining the the faults of the thing very, very rightly so um the very first ones to come out like i said mine it's performed fantastically for three weeks fingers crossed it will do i'm on the case i'm aware of the problems if i have to put a, a big tea tray big tree tech motherboard in so be it and uh as anybody who's into 3D printing will know, it's a non-stop tinkering around thing. I was not going to bother updating the firmware to the community stuff in case it had to go back to Amazon. But as somebody pointed out, they wouldn't even check what firmware was on. I can always put the old one back on as well. I've kept all the original mechanical parts, fans and that. So I can put it back into stock configuration should I need to. But it's the sort of thing, it's not like buying a TV or a a hoover or something like that that's just one item and if it goes faulty you send it back with 3d printers you're constantly working on them updating them putting new bits so i'm pretty sure i'm going to be sticking with it and then progressing through the months and maybe years um updating it but so far i'm dead dead pleased so like i said i'm going to put below all the required links link number one or number number one is to the github page where you can find the firmware as i showed you at the beginning of the video link two is to sebastian's website link three is to the facebook creality cr6 group and link four to the youtube video on uh, tripod's garage where he did the live stream with sebastian hope it's been of some use to people this um if you're thinking of doing it the usual disclaimer this is just a description and a demonstration of how i did it to my machine if when you're doing it to your machine something goes wrong i'm not responsible i'm just showing you what i did to mine it's totally up to you whether you stick with a stock firmware or update to this or whatever but as you saw it went smoothly enough for me yeah i'm pleased i did it i'll just now have to get used to this one and see uh, all its capabilities and carry on printing so if you want to subscribe um, i'm mainly sort of tools and gadget uh, things but now i've got this i may do a few more 3d printing videos i've already done the fan upgrade one and this so if you want to subscribe click the little icon of the shed here stay tuned for loads more reviews thanks again for watching bye for now